This video is special. So special, in fact, that I had to get rid of my old setup to replace it with a brand new one. So we have the Corsair K100 RGB keyboard, the HS80 RGB wireless headset, we have the MM300 Pro mouse pad, and let's not forget the Nightsword RGB mouse. The reason why I swapped all of that is because we are going to be using Corsair's IQ interface. IQ is a software that allows you to manage all of your hardware, your lights, your key assignments, and even some software integration as we will see in a little bit. Now the video you're watching right now has to do with voice mods integration within IQ itself, meaning that you will be able to control voice mod with any of the IQ compatible hardware. Let me show you. After plugging in all of my gear, the first thing that I noticed was this little bar right there with the Elgato logo. Turns out there's also an Elgato integration allowing you to use the G keys on the keyboard as a visual stream deck. If you click on the logo, it will tell you to go download IQ's latest version. But just in case you don't own a stream deck, you can go to Corsair.com, click on software, and click download software. Here, we will make sure that we install the latest version, basically the highest number, <laughs> and install it on our computer. Once Corsair's IQ is installed, it will do some firmware updates on all of your gear. And once you're all set up, you will see a little tab on your homepage telling you about the new voice mod integration. You can click on it to go ahead and download voice mod from their website and install it. Now I already had voice mod installed, but if it's your first time, let me give you a quick rundown on how it works. When you're installing it for the first time, it will ask you to pick your input and output audio. Input is going to be your microphone, output will be your headset for example. Once that is all done, you will be brought to the voice box menu. And this is where you can select the voices. By default, you will be on clean, so that is just your audio. And you can click on the rest in order to try them. Now at the bottom left corner, you will see here myself if you want to be able to monitor what it sounds like. You can activate or deactivate activate the voice changer and then you can turn background effects on and off. Some voices will come with background music, background noises. Hello, test. Welcome. Now voice mod is more than just a voice changer. It does much more. For example, top left, you can see soundboard where you already have loaded libraries or you can create your own libraries if you want to. Add your sounds, keybind them, play them, stop them, loop them. They also have the voice lab, which allows you to add multiple effects to your voice in order to create your own enhanced voice. But we don't have access to it right now because we're using a free version. So what I'm gonna do is actually activate a license and get the pro version. Now that we have the pro version, we can see that all of the voices are now unlocked. We have access to all of those voices. Now that there's no limitation, let's go back to IQ and set it up. Since we have the G keys on the keyboard, let's use this in order to play around with voice mod. So in IQ, I'm gonna to hover over my keyboard and I'm gonna click key assignments. Now at the bottom left we will see a little plus where we can add a new assignment and this is the cool part. If you scroll all the way down you will see everything that is possible with voice mod. Here we have voice changer, voice changer on and off, voice changer on, off, activate voice changer which is the button we saw at the bottom, hear myself to turn on and off the monitoring, hear myself on, off, the background effects, you can mute your mic, pick a random voice, instant sensor beep, which you can hold in order to produce a beep as if you were cursing, trigger sounds from the soundboard, stop all soundboard, and mute for me. So in assignment type, you just have to pick which one you want, click on the key, and then click on which key you would like to assign it to on your keyboard. It doesn't have to be a G key. And depending on the assignment type, you will have different options. Voice changer, for example, will give you a list of all the voices you have available. So if you want to pick specific voices, you can assign specific keys for specific voices. And then you can just add a voice changer on and off in order to turn it on and off. <laughs> a very practical one is the activate voice changer. That one allows you to activate the voice while you're pressing the key. As soon as you release it, the voice changer turns off. Now you can do the same thing if you would like for the button to be on your mouse. The Night Sword mouse has plenty of buttons that you can choose from. And it's just that simple. Now since IQ is also compatible with Elgato Stream Deck, I wanted to test that little bar that appeared in the beginning. It works exactly like a Stream Deck and if you scroll down in the options, you can assign any button you want, including voice mod. This might be a little advanced, but if you have a stream deck, you can do the following. The key assignment is actually layered, meaning that what you assign with the stream deck software will work, but what you assign with the IQ software to the same key will also work, meaning that one key can do multiple things at once. 
So in this case, I wanted to activate the voice mod and turn it off with one button. That would be G2. And with that same button on IQ, I wanted to switch profiles. Now, why would I want to switch profiles? Because I can assign different lighting effects on my hardware. So I created two profiles on IQ. One was voice mod on and the other one was voice mod off. So voice mod off, I would have this normal RGB ripple effect. And on the voice mod on profile, I assign just a solid red color. Could also be a cool visual reminder that I'm currently using the voice mod. And then the rest was super simple. On voice mod off, I had to assign G2 as the key that would switch the profile to voice mod on. And I had to do pretty much the opposite on the other profile. So my G2 key will switch back between voice mod on and off as profiles. Meanwhile, that same G2 button is activating and deactivating my voice mod on the Elgato Stream Deck software. No voice. Titan voice. No voice. Titan voice. Normal voice. Weird voice. <laughs> It might be a lot, but it was my first time using it and it worked perfectly. Overall, this is such a cool system and the voice mod integration makes it even better. There's so many options between the different profiles, the macros, you have so much control over your gear and also the software that you can make some pretty interesting setups if you spend a little bit of time on it. On top of all of that, if you don't have voice mod pro yet, click the unlock pro button at the bottom right corner of your software and you'll receive a special discount. Oh, and a little extra that I forgot to tell you is that voice mod has a free extension that allows your Twitch chat to activate your voice changer using bits. Pretty cool, but I'll let you try all that for yourself. In the meantime, I gotta tell you thank you for watching the video. Go out there, make me proud, get level, out.